Hi, Wendy. How hey. are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm really happy to have you here. In uh, This is uh, the uh, seventh uh, interview uh, from the series A Day in the Life of an Agility and Ever. And I'm happy to have you here, Wendy Rodriguez, with us. So thank you for joining me. Uh, it's fun to speak with you in English, uh, even <laughs> though we speak in Spanish behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's true. But to be honest, I'm really honored to, to be part of these interviews that you're doing. And I really uh, wanted to help, uh, thank you for opening this channel and, and let us uh, explain and talk about uh, our experience and, and, and yeah, so. No, oh, that's awesome. That. You know, thank, thank you for, for being <laughs> here. So, so uh, this is about you. So I, I wanted to know, uh, Wendy, you know, you, you uh, how, how do you become an Scrum Master? You know, tell us about a little bit about your story. How do you get there? Let us know about you. Uh, so I, uh, I graduated as a, a software engineer and uh, so I, I started uh, working uh, as a developer, uh, then I also had experience to be a, a tester and uh, uh, after that I moved into a role as a development lead. Uh, in that uh, I, had, uh, I worked in a very, very good project. Uh, at that time, the project manager um, had to leave for three months and I had to take her role and I found that a lot of the communication uh, was done through other pieces and I wasn't sometimes aware of that. We were actually working in Waterfall at the time mm -hmm. and uh, I remember all those very hard deadlines that no, now you have to send it to QA. Now is the turn of QA to test it and then it's gonna come back and all that stuff. And like, no, but we had this problem and I don't care, you have to send it and all those things. And, and I was like, it has to be a better way to do things. I remember back then, I, I think I tried a couple of times doing a Kanban board or something like that, but I wasn't uh, well knowledgeable how to use it. And uh, then we did a transformation uh, in, the, in that company uh, to go through uh, an agile transformation. And so I was sent to take the Scrum Master certification. So that's how oh. I, I jumped in into the Scrum Master. Okay. And uh, so it was, so the certification is, is, is kind of funny because it's a two days training mm -hmm. uh, where basically they try to teach you uh, basically Scrum, mm -hmm. but uh, it's really, I mean, it's, it's not magical. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be uh, under it that you need to learn as you go, that you need to read a lot, that you need to do experiments and things like that. And so I think it uh, requires a lot of um, try and error, a lot of empirical, and that's the key of Agile, right? So uh, yeah, so it's been, um, let me see, I think uh, three years and so that I okay. have the role uh, of Scrum Master. And, and uh, since then, I really, really like it. I had the chance to, to go back to be a developer. Uh, but to be honest, I was in that, at that point, I was like, okay, what, what do I like the most? What is it that gives me the more satisfaction? And I found that it's a, a role that it's hard to take. A lot of people, a lot of developers, they don't dare to do it because it's challenging. It's not predictable. It's nothing, there are a lot of things that you can learn from other practitioners, but it's a lot of that you have to discover by yourself. So it's a little bit tricky. And to be honest, I really love working with people. Um, I, I like the complexity that that brings. And uh, so that's why, so that's, wow. uh, that's uh, how I, <laughs> so you got into it. Let me see if I got it right. So, so basically, you started. You you can't. You were a developer, then you were a tester. You went into QA, 
And then after that, for the, you know, for a, a casualty with the project manager leaving, you took that, you know. No, actually off. I got, uh, I, I was the development, development lead at that time. Okay, you were. I you was were, in that role okay. like for uh, about a year and a half, two years, something like that. And, and okay. so during that period of time, uh, I was working closely with the project manager and, and I had to there. take the role. Okay, it, you, you it, took well, the didn't, it didn't have to do with uh, being a Scrum Master because no, we cannot exactly, yeah. compare the two roles. The, the mm -hmm. role of making sure that deadlines are happening versus empowering the team and, and things like that. It's, it's, it's not the same. Like We cannot compare those. Mm, uh, but so. I had the visibility. that I, It brought me more visibility on communication with the other teams, uh, what is it that was going on. So it, it really uh, helped me understand that it had to be another, a better way to do things where sure. everybody can work together and, and do, be one single team. So, so basically it was more like, a, so there, is, there should be something out there that is different that it, in terms of the way that we work together the way that we interact together, that we collectively tackle a project or an idea. And it was there when you, you know, by us or you went through the certification process, then it started, you know, jumping a scrum master. You were mentioning this uh, thing that the certification process is not enough. You were discovering things. You need to go through uh, several tests, several experiences. Tell me more about that. I'm really curious about it. What, what uh, do you mean by that? So uh, I think my parcours uh, or whatever we want to call it, uh, my experience with uh, being a Scrum Master, I think it started in a different way than many people uh, because I was working in a waterfall um, and a traditional uh, uh, way of doing things. And we started doing the transition and we didn't have much of, uh, help in terms of people helping us doing that transition it was okay we were kind of alone doing this by ourselves and I didn't have the experience to work in agile like in a mature team uh, before not even as a developer so it was it was difficult for me to um, to learn really the core and, and how to do things being a team member because I wasn't and I was pretty much I jumped into the water to be a scrum master and I had to do things by myself so I had to learn a lot of things to be honest I mean the thing is that you need to every the, the methodology can be something so you have tools but you need to adapt and you need to observe you need to I had to even change the way I was doing things. As before, as I told you, I was a team lead, right? So what is expected to, to a team lead in those environments is that the team lead is the one that leads. It's the one that makes decisions. It's the one that uh, says what you need to do. It's the one that assigns tasks. So. I had to literally tie my hands in my bag and let the other people talk and not me all the time, right? And I had to let them choose what they wanted to do, which is a big difference. I had to ask them to participate and all collectively make a decision, right? It's like, so, so it's like a, you, you were, you know, help me here. So you weren't... <laughs> the leading position but leading yeah. meant to be like deciding as a manager uh, you know much. deciding as a manager like tell tell others what to do like not taking advantage of the collective the intelligence of the group exactly kind of so so you were the one who had the knowledge who had uh, who knew better than others so the shift what i'm hearing it's more like uh, you you said uh, something that was uh, you, you used this. You said I need to uh, tie my hands. Yes. <laughs> you just like uh, let that go and shift into the new way of working, which is more like 
every single one uh, knows better. So we collectively can decide together. And basically through that, you achieve uh, different results or better results. In Definitely, yes. Mm. And so at the very beginning, it was uh, a bit challenging. I had the chance to have one of uh, the, uh, one of my former colleagues and, and my friend, uh, she knew a lot about activities. So she was giving me a lot of feedback um, and I was reading as much as I could. I was experimenting a lot, trying to do things here and there. And uh, then an, an agile coach came to help us and, and I learned a little bit more uh, during that time. And then I had the chance to, to go to another company where um, uh, we were doing uh, really the role of the Scrum Master. It was dedicated and we were able to work in one single, te one single team per Scrum Master. And during that time, I was able to grow a lot because we had basically a community of practice and we were interchanging different techniques, different ideas, and we were sharing, okay, I'm trying this with this team. And also we had that flexibility uh, from management perspective that we were able to, let's say, if I wanted to do a brand new type of retrospective or I wanted to try a different way of estimating uh, story points, for example. We okay. had that flexibility. The experiments were always welcome. So oh. I had the chance to grow a lot uh, at that time. So, so you were saying like, you know, something that intrigues me is the fact that you said that you were changing through the process. That's what I'm uh, Yeah, hearing. I think uh, that's what I did. So, so, uh, tell me about what, what motivates you to go through that change because it's in from personal experience it seems to, to me that it requires a lot of uh, willingness and a kind of a humbleness to see yourself in the mirror and decide okay i need to go through this change what motivates you to continue or keep going and keep uh, learning Well, I think it's, it's the need. I mean, you see that, I mean, as a scroll master, I find uh, myself uh, observing a lot. Uh, so back then when normal was a different normal, when we were in the office and we were able to be all together in the same place, I used to look at the people when we were having meetings and I was not conducting them and I had the chance to really look at each individual. I was in, sometimes I, I try to smell how things are going. So what motivates me to change is basically the need. If I observe that something is not going that well, I try to figure things out and basically I have to search for a solution. I, ha I need to find a better way of doing things. I, mm. I have to, so, and I think that is everybody's motivation. I mean, for example, in software development, if there's a new tool to do this, you go and you research and you learn how to use it and you start using it. Uh, so mm. I think uh, it's a continuous uh, learning process. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 like, I hear that and, and uh, that you know brings me to to the next question. Y y you were saying that people, it's something that matters uh, to you, and you'd like to be you know to be surrounded about people. If I get it right from the beginning of the interview, yes. And now you you uh, at some point you said, I I'm going myself through that change, and you mentioned something like just right after, right before. Uh, where you were mentioning that is there is a new tool that that appears I need to learn and you were re relating that to observation. So now I'm wondering when a change or something happened that you observe, even that you are around a team, you observe that from individuals. Uh, how do does that relate with you changing by uh, yourself? Uh, uh, in relationship with 
the team change in itself. How do you see that? Did I explain myself well? Hmm. I'm you know, not sure. There's a, your personal journey, like uh -huh. I change myself through this, uh -huh. I, see, I see this, so that reflects on me, so I change. Uh -huh. And then that it goes back to the team. That I, you know, as a scrum master, my, my interpretation is we are there to help them grow. Yes. But there is something that, you know, it's on us, that is your own growing, and there is something that is on them, that we yes. help them, which is yeah. their own growing. So what do you see, you know, how do you see the difference uh, in between, I need to change this to mm -hmm. help them, uh, and they need to, I think that they could, there is an opportunity here that they could see to continue growing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me see if I get it right. Um, uh, I think it's both uh, vias, and and sometimes I I use a lot mimicking. So, for example, uh, I remember um, chatting with uh, one of uh, the team members, and in, in, and he was telling me a lot of things, and I was like, okay. So what if you mentioned that in the retrospective? And he was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And mm. so we ended up talking about vulnerability. And I shared with him some videos. And, 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 and I think it, it goes hand by hand. Uh, sometimes it, when I see the need on them, I, I try to replicate that on me. Mm. And I try to give the example. So I remember uh, uh, then showing myself vulnerable to give them the example of how we do that. And in, in, in a certain point, I remember I think I apologized uh, to, to, to the team or something like that. And, but pretty much I, I showed myself that I made a mistake, that I, I, I showed myself vulnerable. vulnerable. And, and, and I think that uh, it goes hand by hand. Uh, oh. Sometimes we think that the team needs to learn this, but to be honest, it's a constant learning. We, I, I don't know, I mean, what was that phrase? I, I just know that I know nothing. I mean, oh. every time we, we find new things, we discover that those things are things that we can learn from that. So, and so we can learn is. from the people as well. So, so basically it's like, so it's both ways. You, you have them teaching you something by showing you, okay, that's something that might need, that might, I might need to change. And at the same time, you show them probably by, by leading by example, something that they might need to learn from it. So exactly. at, at the same time, you are both learning through Definitely. a journey of uh, learning. Yes, and, and I think uh, something important uh, as a Scrum Master is to show ourselves that, uh, a, I mean, to show ourselves that we are not in a, in a leading position or in a higher position than the other people. Hmm. When we show ourselves that we are in the same level, I mean, I've seen people that they show themselves like, I know everything. Uh, I don't need to learn from you or uh, I don't care what happens to you. And, and they don't put themselves in the same level. I found that the teams, they don't open up the same, in the same way. Uh, so showing ourselves that we are vulnerable, that we can learn and that we admire the people who we work with, I think that opens a big door in front of us. The team opens that door and let us enter and help them better. Well, it's a, you know, I thank you for that. It's, a, it's really inspiring. You mentioned two things that, you know, uh, uh, got my attention. First, it uh, is a learning journey. Yeah. Uh, it's a both, you know, both ways, learning journey too. Yes. And the yes. other thing is like leading by example, showing ourselves uh, like we are. Yes. So then the team can open themselves and then, you know, let us get into their system. So now, you know, it, it, that leads me to the next question, which is okay. like a tricky one. Uh -huh. uh, and 
so so basically that that's great so how do you do that you know tell me about like a, a day a typical day uh, as as you play in the role of a scrum master how mm -hmm. do you help the team and help yourself to grow and and you know walk that path of learning together in a typical day hmm. okay uh, so it's going to be a little bit tricky to summarize everything we do because well, every say, single yeah. day is different, uh, but I can, it, I can talk to you on certain uh, meetings or certain behaviors. But you know, so, yeah, let me tell you something that is really curious. Okay. You are the, th the seventh person, uh -huh. every single person in this, uh, you know, who is part of this project has said exactly the same. There is not a day that is exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when I ask this question, it's, uh, you know, I get different. It's a answers. tricky one. Why, Why tricky are we one? asking us this well, you know, I'm, I'm curious, <laughs> but I'm really curious to know, like, uh, what a typical day of uh, uh, an analytic yeah. library is, because you know what, sometimes people don't, don't know what do we do. It is uh, complex, and it, yes, definitely. And and I think it's um, it's important to uh, know exactly what we do. But uh, let me just uh, uh, try to do my best on this. Okay. And so uh, normally, I will uh, at the moment I'm working with uh, multiple teams. Uh, so I go to the stand up meetings. Um, uh, I try to uh, observe and, and find out if they have any impediments. Um, so if, if they do, I try to resolve them as soon as possible. Um, uh, if I uh, have an upcoming retrospective, I start ahead trying to plan uh, with, uh, about that retrospective. And as I mentioned before, in every single meeting, when I'm with them, I try to observe, digest, try to figure things out where they are, what do they feel, and based on that, I select that template uh, mm -hmm. of retrospective that I'll, I'll use. Um, if I find that uh, perhaps the vision is not clear for them, I talk to the product owner uh, to, to organize a meeting and, and get, get that clarified. Uh, some other team members just ping me and they said, I don't have access to this, uh, uh, this tool. Mm -hmm. uh, can you help me with that? So I contact the people from another team to get the, that access. Some other ones don't know how to use this tool that we use for the backlog. So I help them with that. Uh, a lot of interactions, a lot of uh, going here, going there, uh, trying to, to make the teams more effective. Um, mm. uh, I normally like to check that we have some tools to find house our quality, for example, in the code. Uh, what are the techniques that the team are, do, are using? Uh, uh, I check what are the actual elements that we had last retrospective. I go, uh, where is it documented? Take a screenshot of that, share it with the team. Hey, uh, uh, how are we doing with these action items? And so it's, it's a variety of things. So depending on what is the methodology we're using, uh, right now we are using most, uh, mostly Kanban, uh, but uh, with the teams that we are using Scrum, so help the PO uh, making sure that the, the backlog is ready, mm. uh, that uh, is well, uh, well done, um, identify what are the possible experiments that the team can do. So you are so telling really me the easy ones, right? Sorry? You are telling me the easy ones. <laughs> yeah, so I'll tell you, you know, just to manage the time that we have, we have uh, uh, almost uh, eight minutes ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, um, I have uh, two more questions after this one, but you know, you, you said something that you know I, I try to uh, wrap it up like in, in from my understanding. It's like you are uh, the air controller. You know the ones that are the uh, you know the, the tower on the airports, like controlling the the the, the flights that are just like you know passing around to avoid like uh, crashes, uh, you know uh, aircraft uh, crashes and, and all that. So it seems that you are like monitoring the whole system and through observation, you, you help the team from outside just to see themselves. Like, okay, this is, you, to clear the path, so then they are, you know, 
delivering closely and helping each other. Is, is yeah. that it? Did I get it right? That's, yeah, you basically got it right. Yeah. So that means that probably you're going to be dealing with uh, some uh, conflicts, helping them clear that out, or maybe like showing uh, like there, there is some things that are, you know, blocking the team that they're not seeing, yeah. or just like helping with shaping the division, the mission, or Exactly. Them, I find? If I find that uh, somebody is um, is not, it could be something. I mean, I, I try to have regular one-on-ones with them as well uh, to to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Okay, so you use the one-on-ones and all that. So uh, that, that that could be uh, really tricky sometimes, and other times we have uh, we succeed at what we do. And could you tell tell us like a, a succeed or something, a story that you remember that, you know, reminds you why are you doing this job? So um, basically there are so many, I would say so many things that comes to my mind, but when I see the team members that they collaborate and that, uh, they get closer with uh, each other and they are able to, to work better. Uh, that really help, helps me be and continue with this journey, uh, see the efficiency and the smooth communication that they can have. Uh, uh, it's, it's really an, a, a success for me. And, mm. and, I, and for example, I, I've had many, many, success uh, retrospectives where people are able to open up and and have that uh, a opportunity to to really um speak and share with with the rest of the team and find mm. ways to improvement are are really exciting so so it's kind of like you when you are <coughs> able to help people in a team to properly be themselves and be the most authentic person to and be able to communicate and properly collaborate is there when you find your you said okay we have succeeded as a team is that it definitely but yeah. also i think the most exciting uh, pieces is where i found an obstacle when, when i find a problem hmm. when you find a problem yeah uh, when I need to find a solution, how to solve it. That's where the things uh, become exciting. Mm. And uh, once we find that solution and we implement it, or we, do, we just do an experiment and it worked, uh, that is when uh, things... Uh, so basically, if the team succeeds, uh, I succeed as well. So... Wow. So if the yeah. team succeeds, you succeed. Yes. Hmm, that, that brings me to the uh, the uh, last question, which is, what do you think uh, are the, the key factors that helps you help that team succeed? Think about the three past years. What have been that common, those common elements that you have put at the service of the team to help them three. succeed? Well, you know, whatever comes to mind, but the, the, the more important things that you, the key elements that you consider have uh, done this, so basically based on that, we have succeeded. So in terms of, um, I think we need to have a lot of empathy. 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 Uh, to understand that uh, each person is different and that mm. also each team is different that we cannot treat each team the same way and that we need to work with them uh, their own rhythm and find the best uh, ways of doing things for them mm. the other one i will say is knowledge because uh, the more knowledge we get the better the better tools we can find the better ways of doing things Mm -hmm. and, um, and and I think the other one is is uh, uh, active listening. So active that's, listening. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's something really hard to master. <laughs> 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 and I find yeah. that uh, uh, a lot of people tend to uh, think 
while the other people are talking and, and, and I actually I catch myself doing that and I remember that day I, I even asked the person to repeat what they were saying because I wasn't paying attention I was in my mind trying to figure things out what I wanted to say so for me active listening is one of the key elements uh, to really be able to understand what the other person is saying wow hey Wendy you know, we're, we're uh, close to the end of the interview. I, I wanted to thank you for being uh, so open and uh, genuinely share what do we do when we are playing this uh, role uh, at, uh, you know, as a Scrum Master, as an agility enabler, helping finally people to be better at what they do, you know, find value, of, uh, you know, just to go to work and, you know, meet their teammates and interact better and have better collaborations and how do we help with that so yeah. it has been a pleasure about bb so thank you for your time and for enlightening this uh, afternoon here in montreal mm -hmm. i remember people watching this video that we're in confinement given the covid 19 outbreak so we don't have a chance to meet together but it has been a blast to meet you today so uh, you thank you for that so before leaving uh, any advice you would uh, share with those that are in the same journey that like we are any, so any, i think any uh, one of the things that uh, helped me a lot is to uh, like i said be open uh, try to learn as much as i can uh, ask questions be curious uh, one of the things I remember when we started going to the Scrum Master Clinic with you is that we were able to realize that there are other Agile practitioners that are basically in the same boat, that have questions, have challenges. Uh, this role, I think, is not easy, to be honest. This is difficult, this complex, uh, but that is what makes it exciting at the same time. So. I think the more resources that we can find online, uh, you just be the virtual version of the Scrum Master Clinic, and it was really, really amazing. So thank you for that. And uh, I think the more we can learn from other people, the more we can open up ourselves to get knowledge from other people and try new things. I think that's uh, a really good way to to go through this journey. Awesome. But thank so, you. Uh, so when <laughs> Thank you for that. We will meet each other like uh, quite soon. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs>